I'm a dog with a torch in my mouth for my Lord. This is Father Jacob Bertrand Jansen, and welcome to this episode of Guest Bling. Thanks to all those who support us. If you enjoy the show, please consider making a monthly donation on Patreon. Be sure to like and to subscribe to God's Planning wherever you listen to your podcasts. All right, here we are. If you're watching, uh, then you'll see that I'm here with two other Dominicans, Dominican friars, but not Dominicans of God's planning. Are there Dominicans of God's planning? There are, but uh, yeah. yeah, not with them. So today on this episode of Guest Planning, super excited and honored to have uh, two members of the Hillbilly Thomists, Father Thomas Joseph White and Father Jonah Teller, uh, with us today to talk about some some upcoming stuff, an upcoming album, some touring stuff, whatever else they're going to talk about. So, fathers, welcome. It's great to have you. Thanks. Great to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Why don't we start by, um, well, you both were on the podcast, I don't know, a couple years ago now? Was it two, yeah, it was three a while years back. ago? Yeah. Let's, um, you're both super famous, but for those who might not know the Hillbilly Thomists or whatever, why don't we start with a little intro? Um, yeah, you can introduce yourselves to, to our listeners. That'd be great. Sure. Well, I'm the, I'm the less super famous of the two of us. I am a priest of four years now. It was uh, May 23rd is my fourth anniversary of priesthood. I'm currently serving as parochial vicar at St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Greenwich Village in downtown Manhattan. And I'm the fourth best guitarist in the band. Awesome. Congrats. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Notice that he's not disputing that. Yeah. Nor <laughs> I. I agree with that. No. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, uh, yeah, I, I'm the, Thomas Joseph White, I'm the uh, rector at the Angelicum in Rome, our university in Rome of the Dominican order, and I teach theology here. And um, yeah, I've been a casual member of the Hillbilly Thomas from the time that it was just a hobby that we did for fun. And I've been really thrilled to be part of the, the project. And I uh, usually play the banjo in the band. That's cool. Yeah, I am. Um... <laughs> It's awesome. I was in formation at the House of Studies with Father Jonah. Um, so we go way so back. So many memories. Father, yeah. So many memories. And Father Thomas Joseph was uh, at the running the Thomistic Institute and teaching at the Dominican House of Studies when I was in formation there. So a lot of memories there too, just trying to heal from all the abuse that I took. Um, <laughs> you know, that's. Yeah, you can't process. say that about seminaries. You can't say that. You're not allowed to it's say It's a process. That. No, you know, we have to be a little vulnerable with I our thought you were treated so very. Can... I thought you were treated very well. <laughs> I'm and, sure and, you do. And, uh, you know, I, I think when it, when it comes to, you know, verbal sparring, you, you seem to have understood the Lord's dictum. It is better to give than to receive. <laughs> I, you know, that's, I just want to be a self gift, you know, to everybody yeah. that I encounter. So it's, it's a real beauty. So uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, before we talk about, so you guys, you y'all have an album coming out, which we're going to talk about in a second. But for those, I, I imagine a lot of people who are listening are familiar with the Hillbilly Thomas, but some people might not be. So can you give a little like intro to what the Hillbilly Thomas is, why it's called the Hillbilly Thomas, that sort of thing, just to get people up to speed? Well, I think it's important to understand that it's not required to be a Dominican friar or priest that one be a member of a bluegrass Americana folk band, but it does happen from time to time that priests play music in, you know, informal settings. So anyway, we created this band really mostly congealed around, I'd say, 2015, 2016, and uh, has eight members who are all Dominican friars from the East Coast province who all played music together in Washington, D.C., and very few of us are there now, but what we do is we play both classic, you know, folk and bluegrass songs, but we also write a lot of our own stuff and we do some instrumental. Uh, there is a lot of instrumental and kind of complicated harmonic singing in the music that makes it a little bit more technical, at least to us, kind of technical and interesting. And at the same time, it's got an old kind of old style um, appellation feel to it and there's yeah some the lyrics can be either more serious or more comic they tend to have a kind of religious side to them not always so um i don't know if that is, and we took the name of the band from flannery o'connor because she says in her letters that people think she's a hillbilly nihilist as where she's really a hillbilly thomist and since she's a southern author and she considers herself a thomist and 
our band has a kind of southern roots gothic southern charm to it uh and we're thomas we thought that title was uh, um appropriate yeah that's right we uh we really the band just kind of grew out of playing music that we like to hear and you know we like we like the song we'll play the song and uh father thomas joseph and father austin litke they were the original founders of the band and they were very kind when um about i don't know five or six uh younger idiots came to the dominican house of studies and started playing music and said hey hillboy thomas that's a cool name we'll just use that for our band um and so we just kind of took that and slapped it on ourselves and then when we decided we we're going to record an album uh they very graciously uh you know came on board for that with their you know their gravitas and their you know they're very serious men and they take the craft very seriously so it was a really good you know uh heavy balance to our our levity you know that's awesome yeah, yeah, that's great. One of the actually, um, the other day, I well, one of the my favorite t shirts, maybe I shouldn't like this is like I'm supporting um, you all now, but is the Hillbilly Thomas t shirt with the, the peacock on it, you know, an homage, another homage to Flannery O'Connor, who yeah. yes. owned, owned peacocks. I do have to say if peacock, if like Flannery were my neighbor with peacocks, they would be dead in a week. Like those <laughs> things are obnoxious. <laughs> They're so loud. Yeah, but they're much cool better shirt. in print. Yeah, yeah thank agreed. You. Yeah. Agreed, yeah. Um, yeah, we've been working very, very slowly on trying to update our Godsplaining swag, which means that we haven't done it in like two years mm -hmm. and we keep brainstorming about it. We had a retreat recently and we're soliciting ideas from people and we got like cardigan sweaters and like other weird things that people wanted, which aren't gonna happen. But we yeah. keep we keep going back to the um to the Hillbilly Thomas swag merch page because your guys stuff is a lot cooler than ours hey, so. thanks well i'll just say that um it, while people well, for all the fans of god's planning while you're waiting for them to update their merch you can consider every piece of hillbilly thomas merch as supporting god's planning spiritually yeah. financially it will yeah. support the band but just if you very if you want to support god's planning but get some cool merch definitely you know get father jacob bertrand's favorite t-shirt which is the peacock band t-shirt so you like that that was that was a nice uh, you know lob that right in for you to make a i really like appreciate that, that. Yeah. right yeah. over the plate yeah all right all right so you are all coming out with album number four that's soon. right yeah when soon soon like end of july soon or like yeah, end end of of july. July. yeah. First single is right. up. the first single is up online it's a song called justify you it's on spotify apple music and all that and uh we're going to release the second single and the third single uh shortly in the coming weeks uh sequentially and then the whole album comes up on spotify and anywhere music is sold online for purchase um in late july and we have a tour in late july early august and the album's called marigold and there's a why is it called marigold yeah there's a song on the album called marigold and we we, yeah. we made it a title song it's a reference to the yeah. birth of mary which was its own journey. I mean, <laughs> at a certain point, I think we had a list of maybe 24 different names um, of varying seriousness that were like, like one of the band, Father Timothy Danaher, um, whom Father Jacob Burton, I believe you, you are assigned with him now. He would collect potential he's assigned, albums. He's assigned to me. Um, you know, that's what it is. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just, that's great. You're that's collecting that's Tim's. Right. You're collecting Father right. Tim's. Yeah. yeah um so we had a lot of different band album title options and then we went on marigold i can't remember the exact reason it won out but i think we just have a real soft spot for the the song itself it's a it's one of our first um kind of marian songs um though our lady isn't referenced explicitly but i think there's a clear um homage to her there so i think that's probably also the dominicans being the the order of our lady we were naturally inclined to pick that um is it is it a song that you all wrote is it um original? yeah justin bolger wrote the song it's a got a, okay. a very complex harmonic setting of voices it's um up tempo but also really kind of s sort of uh i mean it's more of like a a serious song but not in a heavy way in a, in a sort of a beautiful yeah. way and um yeah so that's 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 the title track and uh this is a long album like almost an hour of music i think there's like 13 songs on there mm -hmm. uh so we're continuing our tradition of it kind of i wouldn't say cramming but putting a lot of songs on the album so yeah lots of different yeah, and i think 
uh, 12 of them, if I'm not mistaken, those are original. There's only one uh, kind of old hymn that we picked up and dusted off. Um, cool. So, yeah, yeah I think great. I've heard, I, I know Father Timothy, who's who you just mentioned, who lives up here in Hanover, um, he had some of like some of the record. Well, I think it actually it was when when a group of you were here. That's right. Uh, working on some other music. I heard some snippets of I don't know if I heard of heard anything from Marigold, but um heard some snippets of the you know, of what you guys were working on. I don't think mm -hmm. they were maybe they were edited. I don't know what they were, but they were that was it was cool. Um wait, so I'm thinking now, okay, this is this is like the it's gears are turning. Yeah. I know. Once in a while. Yeah. Um so Marigold is Mar is the flower Marigold named after in honor of the Blessed Mother? It better be. Or is that just we kind just, of coincidental? We just think that, they're, that poetically or it could be associated, but your your historical question is a really good one. We didn't even worry about it. <laughs> okay, I'll yeah, we don't, we don't worry about we don't research. worry about history. Yeah, we just kind yeah. of. Yeah, I mean it's a just it's, it's, it's a good question. Yeah. But yeah, I mean not, in, I in, in the symbol in the symbolism of the song, he he did the author of the song, who's Justin. He did put the two things together. And it works. Yeah. I think the way he the way yeah, he cool. connected the idea of spiritual growth and uh, perseverance, waiting for the spring, um, some interesting yeah images. I think so. He used that as a kind of poetic uh, trope to develop an yeah. idea of the inner spiritual life of a human being. That's cool. So you mentioned that the album's thirteen tracks, hour long. Is that similar to the previous? three um i don't i can't remember yeah they're all they're all kind of in that range i think we may have okay. we have more songs on this one than some of the other albums but it's it's kind of continuing a pattern yeah yeah so what's i guess on the other side what's different what's new uh, with the, uh, you mentioned father jonah that that a lot of original music yeah. on this album but what's um, different what's new it's exciting about it sure well the last three albums so we have four albums total the last three albums have been predominantly originals so that's remained the same. Um, okay. One thing that we tend to do with each album, we add a new instrument, or what I mean to say is that we discover an instrument that we all become sort of collectively obsessed with, and then we make Father Peter Gouch learn that instrument because he's like the best musician of the whole band. Um, I mean, this is a guy who can like, you can play like an eight person jam for 10 minutes. And at the end of it, he will look at the man across the room and tell him that his like D string is flat. And it will be, um, you know, so he's just incredible. So basically what happens is like, um, it was the, the album before this one, it was a resonator guitar that we got excited about. It's like, Peter, learn how to do cool things with this. And then this year we um, discovered the Dobro, which is like a, a guitar that you play on your lap. It's got raised strings you play with a slide and, and finger picks. And so he said, Peter, learn this song, this instrument. And he did. Um, so that is the kind of new thing to look for. We've got this awesome Dobro slide guitar sound that um, influences a lot of the different album uh, of different songs. But Father Thomas Joseph is kind of our, I would say, research and development guy when it comes to finding instruments. He's been responsible for that. So can you explain why except, with the Dobro? Except he didn't do the research on Marigold. So that's fair. Department. That's true. That's rough. But yeah. I but I did get into the Dobro and I did convince Peter to, to purchase that Dobro. So um, yeah, and that was a, probably I think a, a a good decision. Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. look, it's a, it's a classic bluegrass um, and country music instrument, but you can play up tempo kind of uh, you know, more up tempo country music with it, and it 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 when you add it with other things like the violin, the banjo. Uh, or you know the fiddle, the banjo. Um, Thank you. We use, a lot of deep, we use a lot of deep bass um, as a kind of both rhythm, like rhythm percussion instrument on the one side, and 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 kind of providing lower tones. So I mean, like the new the new song that's out, Spotify You, has sorry, <laughs> sorry. Justify You. This thing yeah, we get twenty dollars every time we say the word Spotify. Spotify You yeah. on you can find that, that yeah, on Justify. We should yeah. mention we've totally sold out with this album. So it's Spotify You, Marigatorade, um, yeah. RC Cola gets a big plug. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's my product yeah. placement. But I mean, if you yeah, exactly. if you listen to the thing on Spotify, the Justify You song, like the the Peter, Peter Gauch's uh, Dobro solo is like really indicative of a lot of what we tried to do on this album. And but but what's interesting is like to watch how that engages with the, like the very powerful bass, uh, 
like playing on that song, which is excellent. And mm-hmm. yeah, we added some electric piano on that. That it's a pretty complicated song. I'd say one of the difference that's also on this album, besides like exploring stuff with the dobro, is this is the most musically complicated album we've made. Which is not to say it's always best, but you know, there's more. There's like more harmonies. Yeah. I think here, vocal harmonies in general. There's a lot of um, yeah. There's a lot of musical. Um, I, there's more musical layering. I think if you look back two albums ago, we were playing slightly simpler, simpler musical oh set. Oh my gosh, yeah. And I and I think that that's I say, not all positive necessarily. I'm not saying that complex is no, always better. Yeah. It's a more complex album. I would say, I mean, if you want some band drama, um, there are definitely kind of two camps in the band. There's like the Father Thomas Joseph and me camp, which is like three chords, some lyrics, great. This song is definitely done after a couple takes. And we're going to move on to like, you know, lunch. And then you've got Father Justin and Father Peter who hear, they're like, you know, like dogs can hear things like on frequencies that nobody else can hear. That's them. They can hear things. And Father Justin has literally wrote, written a song called I'm a Dog. So I think that it's true. But they can, they'll hear like, oh no, we can do something different with this harmony. Or let's literally do 50 takes of a solo. Um, and they just want to over and over and over again until you want to throttle them. But I mean, they're probably right in the end because the songs sound really lovely, but there's definitely two camps of like that's, oh, and also the extreme of me and father Thomas Joseph is father Timothy Danaher. Um, he is, he is a one take machine. Yeah. If yeah. he, if he had his way, we would show up for one day, do each song once and we'd be done. Yeah. When you all were up here in Hanover doing some recording there, you guys were recording something um and i was like sitting listening and just yeah. enjoying the music because it's great to listen to and uh i remember at some point it might have been your brother father simon who said okay let's do five more takes of whatever or it might have been even three to, like okay, yeah. it was like three more and then you did one and and then like he was like okay three more and that happened like three or four times <laughs> where the number wasn't coming down and i was just yeah. like is anyone else realizing he's not <laughs> counting anymore he's yeah. just saying the same thing over and over i mean i get the process but at some point i was like I'm done. I gotta yeah. go. I gotta yeah, go. You can only out. hear. Uh, I mean, once uh, because you play the song like ten or twelve times, at, like when you're actually recording, just to get that many takes. So Father Justin can do his like Frankenstein stuff on Pro Tools, but yeah, around take eight, your fingers are killing you, and you're just ready to. You don't love the song with as much like immediate pathos. At least yeah, I, yeah. I will say sometimes the it's the eighth, ninth, tenth take where it really crystallizes. And there's a time actually at w- at which point you don't get better at it. That's also very important. Like you, you, if mm-hmm. you're playing the t- when you're recording, you know, it's kind of fun because you can do like you can make the, the songs they improve and you can you can, as Jonas suggesting, you can select sh- select out like uh, this, you know, solo or that that chorus that's particularly beautiful, you know, and. So it stays authentically your music, but you put like what you did best together. Sometimes it's possible to do that, but you know, you also get better at playing the song. And so, but there's a threshold to that, right? I mean, you just, there's a point at which it's diminishing returns as, as Justin himself will say, you know, it's, you're, we're playing this a lot and it's not getting better. So it's time to accept it as it is. And yeah. I, you know, I think that that's where his perfectionism meets realism and also, I think that it's a kind of balance, right? I mean, when you're recording, it's kind of like when you're writing or when you're doing something in a job, you want to try to get better at it, but you you also want to not lose the joy of of doing mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's something obviously unique about Dominicans or priests playing music in a in like a public way, you know, as far as not just like playing in the backyard or in the common room or just enjoying it together. Um, I know like with, with respect to God's planning, one of the things that we often say about ourselves is that like, we're not podcasters, we're preachers. So the, the ability to preach the gospel in various ways is important to it. Like, that's why we do God's planning, not to be in on the airwaves per se, but to be able to talk about our Lord to people who listen or who might otherwise not have the opportunity. So I guess like where, how does that work with Hillbilly Thomas? Does it work with Hillbilly Thomas? What I guess is like the, is there an evangelical motivation or is it just like, we like playing music and yeah, what is, I guess, what's the kind of mentality there with you all? I mean, I um, could I say think, some things, what I think, but. Yeah, I mean, my sense of it, I'm, I'm really interested to hear what Father Thomas Joseph wants to say, but 
my sense of it is that it's sort of, um, I mean, Christ is at work trying to reach his people throughout all time in all places. And he involves, uh, you know, his creatures in that process. So he involves these Dominican preachers. And so the reason I start with that is that, like, in some ways, I really do play music just because I love playing music with my brothers. It's a real joy. It's something that naturally kind of spills out of our fraternity and it's an expression of that. And it's our way of like also articulating what we think about God and his creation. And there's something about it that we just choose it for that. But at the same time, and in the same sort of motion, you do have a sense of wanting to share it with other people. And you have this instinct that it's something that other people want to listen to as well. It's something that can also create uh, bridges, points of connection with unlikely audiences who might not ever want to step into a church, but might like your music or at least respect your music um, or just be, think it's like a gimmick. And that's the thing. It's like, it's kind of gimmicky, but it's really good. So it's not just a gimmick, but that's all for me kind of, you know, like as far as intention goes, like second, though I recognize that like, I think Jesus does his work through his preachers, but the way that I experience it primarily is like, I love playing music with my brothers. And I also know that that is being used for the Lord's purposes. Um, I don't know. Thomas Joseph. Oh, I like that. So, you know, I think, I think it's very different than say, like writing a book. I think when I write a book, it's like, when I write theology books, um, I, I have a pretty instrumental view of those. Like I, you know, I want to help people think about belief, faith, intellectual life, philosophical thinking, uh, and, you know, although I believe in trying to be articulate or elegant in writing, or maybe occasionally poetic, although that's not really my disposition personally, or my vocation, you know, I think it's more, I have a more instrumental or workmanlike view of language. But I think that this is, I feel very differently, like about playing music. I really don't even think of a Hillbilly Thomas as kind of primarily like a so-called Christian music thing. I just think it's fun to play, fun or really kind of fascinating to play music uh, and to try to have this kind of creative outlet. But I also think exactly as Father Jonas said, like it does delight or interest some people. And, um, you know, life is more than just ideas and propositions or even maybe major moral choices. It's also just sometimes enjoying life. And and I believe in the beauty of the liturgy. That's a different thing. But there's also being with other people in the car or listening to music around the house or when you're washing the dishes, listening to music. And I think the Hillbilly Thomas stuff provides a forum for people to live as Christians or Catholics or just human beings, um, uh, you know, just by delighting in music and other in other venues of life. I mean, it's just fun music to listen to, at least for some people. We're big with the under six crowd. There's a lot of little kids who love our music. <laughs> Did not plan on that. There's a lot of homeschool and families. If you get you know, that, in you the get the parents too. Yeah, it's body. funny that you mentioned mentioned the little kids because my sister has two little kids. It, he's just turned what's two. The name, what's the name of her oldest uh, oldest child? He 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 just turned two. They haven't named him yet. It's Jonah. That's why he's asking. So Jonah turned two, and my niece Avila is just over one, and they love the Hillbilly Thomas. Yeah. And now that they're my nephew's talking, anytime my sister will put it on like the YouTube videos, and he he just thinks it's me. He thinks it's a bunch of me. So he, he, he gets, he thinks that I'm all of the members of the Hill of Billy Thomas because really cool. he just sees the habit. That's really cool. Is that because you he, told him that? Yeah, he's just like been whispering that no, to his mind. Like, no, not yeah. at all. No, but he'll yell my name at the TV and it's like you guys singing. And my sister's like, oh my gosh. So, yeah, I, mean, all awesome. you could, I mean, honestly, the way I feel at this point is you could have just told me you have a sister who has children and she's a Catholic in the United States. And I would have said, oh, so her kids are Hillbilly Thomas fans. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah. of course, the music's not actually for children. If you think about like the lyrics, they're sometimes funny right. or strange, yeah. but they're like actually laden with all this theological significance. Yeah. So I it's mean, you even said a bad of word in one of your songs. Uh, yeah, 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 a little bit. Yeah. Well, the, you the know, explicit album. Not, not yeah. bad. <laughs> but I mean, you know, the thing sure. is that you have these little kids singing all this theology and occasionally they understand it even, which is funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, like there, there's somebody was, um, there's one, um, there's one line in Holy Ghost Power that uh, Thomas Joseph wrote, which um, talks about um, like the truth, essentially, like that now I eat it in the body and I drink it in the wise blood. And we got fan mail from somebody that said like that her little child after um, communion whispered up to her, mommy, I like the wise blood. 
Yeah. That's awesome. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's cool. Flannery yeah. O'Connor, yeah. famous novel, Wise Blood. Yeah. Right. So that was a Flannery O'Connor reference, and now we've indoctrinated a two-year-old in the higher ways of American Christian literature. So I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I, I kind of find that interesting, you know, poetically. Yeah. Because, um, you That's, know, you yeah. don't That's you cool. write music hoping people like it, but you don't actually think about it intergenerationally. Uh, but I don't know. You know, so I think families come to the concerts. Young people also like it. I mean, I think that our statistics – uh, online, which someone, one of our our uh, assistants showed us, is that you know we were most popular with men in the in the thirty in their thirties, you know. But I presume that a lot of them are playing it for their families, and um, I, you know, I I don't know, I don't know, I can't think of music instrumentally like I'm I'm doing this to you know, <laughs> try to influence the world like some James Bond villain or something. It seems so strange. Um, yeah, it's yeah. where you know if you're talking to somebody in preaching, you aren't preaching to like perform a beautiful sermon you're preaching because yeah. you want to communicate something that's deeply true uh but i think with music there's like a delight in the form of the music and you know this is also like music where there's a mixture of discipline and innovation like jazz has also you have to be pretty good at it but once you get pretty good at it it's so fun it's just like a there's like a, a level of kind of creative spontaneity in it that, yeah. we, that we explore and that's just delightful i mean it's just part of being human yeah, that's awesome. Well, we have a couple minutes left. So I wanted to make mention of two other things. Um, I can mention the other album. I think you said that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. So you're working on a Christmas album too, um, which that that's what the, you all were working on up here in Hanover. So I got to listen to some Hillbilly Thomas Christmas music in production, which was awesome. Is that coming out for this season or is that a, like a longer term project? It's a multi year um, project. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could come out anywhere between this year and uh, 2027, we'll say. Um, Perfect. Okay. So maybe well, like stay tuned. You know, December 17th, 2027, I guarantee it'll be out then. Um, but Perfect. it very well could come out this year. We've got a lot of work done on it. We really like the sounds of what we have. Um, and it's just a matter of seeing if we can get a little bit of studio time. Basically, we have to make Father Peter like play all the hard stuff. Um, got it. You know. But we got that. We have a tour coming up. Yeah, that was um, going to ask. Say say something about that. Sure. Um. So starting in July, um, you can go to hillbillythomists. dot com. I think it's dot com. Anyway, if you find Hillbilly Thomas' website, there's only one of them. Um, we're going on a tour, the Marigold tour, starting in uh, late July, mid to late July, and running through about the middle of August, and we'll be going all over the place. Um playing some shows in the Pacific Northwest, um, Park City, Utah, Whiting, Indiana at a pierogi festival, which apparently gets hundreds of thousands of people. Um, the National Eucharistic Congress, uh, the band will be there. St. Augustine, Florida, Savannah, Georgia, Knoxville, Asheville, North Carolina, Charlotte, um, Washington, D.C., New Orleans, and maybe a couple other places I've forgotten, but we're kind of moving all over the place. We had initially built it as a Southern tour, but then it got out of hand. Um, but that'll, you can find all the dates and buy tickets at our Hillbilly Thomas website, which I think is hillbillythomas.com. It is indeed .com. I, nice. I've done my research. Well, my research department has gotten back to me. Uh, it is .com. <laughs> nice. uh, I, have, I have one request. Um, should there, is there, are there machinations for a fifth album? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So request instrument new instrument i since 2016 or 17 father peter and i were living together at saint dominic's in 16 to 17 uh i've wanted him to get a harp guitar uh what? And he has not got, look it up do your research i can't do everything a harp, a guitar. harp guitar that should be the instrument featured on Whoa. album five. Oh, yeah. Whoa. just, just l let that percolate yeah. i like those of course, want to respect yeah. your want to respect your your intentions. There, they they may be yeah. tensions between your intentions and some of my intentions. But I'm do as he said, I'm the I'm, I'm the instrument researcher, so I'll look at the harp. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, or maybe uh, album six. Yeah. You know, we got yeah. time. So, well, do you? Is there a is there a current instrument besides the uh, the Telecaster that's still in your heart lately? Well, I think we should be thinking a little bit about that. The Telecaster. I think we should also be thinking a little bit about like the. Uh, the slide steel guitar um you know both, i think, I think maybe cool. we should go back i think i think that we've been a little bit 
a little bit hard on the on the electric piano and the piano. I think we should maybe think about integrating those things back in, and maybe just occasionally a saxophone solo. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. Well, you know who you know who plays the saxophone? Kenny Father G. Patrick Briscoe. Father no Patrick way. Briscoe. Our invisible yeah. host. Could he be an honorary member of the Hillbilly Thomas? Please say no, because we'll never hear the end of it. Uh, no, we're not going to say that on on air. That's too dangerous to say. I and just know, the very fact that we've asked the question means that you're going to be like a our Sunday visitor editorial about like, <laughs> there are the rumors true? Is, is Patrick Briscoe a member of the Hillbilly Thomas? Yeah, that's right. So. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I guess it's we're we're going to leave it here. And then, unless there are any final thoughts, words, comments, contentions that you all wanted to provide, Gosh, the Hillbilly Thomas. See everybody on tour. Yeah, we like yeah. to see people on tour and, you know, check out the Hillbilly Thomas on Amazon, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and wherever music is available. Spotify you. Awesome, yeah. Spotify you. There you go. Yeah. On Justify. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so check it out. Check out, the, check out the, the single that's been released, Justify You, that's on Spotify, wherever you listen to your music. We'll drop um, links in our show notes for your website, which is indeed.com, that has information on uh, their tour upcoming. If, you're, if they're coming, if the Hillbilly Thomas are coming to your area, definitely get tickets. It's worth seeing and, and hanging out. Links to the merch, especially that sweet. Uh, peacock t-shirt those that's cool the other stuff is really cool too and um, their other albums their other three albums are available on spotify apple music wherever you listen to your music um, marigold is going to drop later this summer so be sure to to check it out and stay tuned uh father jonah father thomas joseph thanks so much for being on on the podcast it was fun talking fun hanging uh yeah. with you guys for a little bit um, yeah, to all of you listening, thanks for tuning in to this episode of God's Planning. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, like, subscribe, leave a five-star review. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can do so through Patreon. There's a link in the description there. You can also follow the links in the description to shop our outdated God's Planning merch, to stay tuned for upcoming God's Planning merch, and to get information about our upcoming events and retreats. Um, until next time, pray for us. We're praying for you. And God bless.